Hey everyone, um, my first video ever on this channel, I'm going to start a project here that I've been wanting to, wanting to do this for a little while, I just have never got around it. Um, back in like 2005, not 2000, so back in, yeah 2005 is too early, back in like 2007 sort of time, um, the EPC701 came out, I love this thing, um, this is not my actual original one, my original one suffered a fatal accident and give you an idea there is half of the logic board for it um, but I've got this one here um, this one also suffered a bit of an accident um, it's kind of hard to see but you may be able to see that the screen if I power it on if the screen backlight still works um, it may be possible to see that the screen suffered quite a severe accident and uh, no, the screen doesn't appear to want to come on basically the screen smashed and there's something else wrong with this thing but there's one thing, I have about 10 batteries for this, because this thing's battery life was absolutely atrocious, like in the realm of like two hours, and you know, that's basically useless really. So that thing's battery life was terrible, so I bought a lot of batteries for it, and moved on years and years now. Um, I got an EPC 701, no, that's 701, an EPC-1000H that I bought later when I finally decided to ditch this. That thing works much better, but even that now these days is getting quite unusable with the rate that there's web apps and all stuff like that. Got half a dozen batteries for this that work perfectly, and they're all genuine batteries, they're not El Cheapo crap. And they're all 7.4 volt, and then some of them 5200, some of them are 4400 milliamp hours. Um, I was thinking, what on earth can I actually do with all these batteries? And I've been looking on eBay at some... Of course, I don't have any of it open, do I? Um, I've been looking... Sorry about the flickering. I've been looking on eBay at some stuff like this, which these are the chargers that take um, the um, 18650 lithium-ion cells, which... Basically every laptop battery is made up of these and the 701 battery is no exception. Here's a Yeah, you can actually see it's kind of hard to see here, but you can see 18650 there so that battery has these cells in it, but I thought as much as I'm probably never gonna buy another 701 and use it as a laptop um, I still I don't know, I don't really want to chop up all those battery packs. It, you know, if they were cheap generic ones, sure, but they're all perfectly working genuine ASUS ones. So then I thought, well, what can I possibly do to actually use these batteries so they're not just sitting around doing nothing? Most laptop batteries are 11.1 volt because they've got three cells in series. Um, if we have a, if we actually go back to this picture, um, you get a better idea of it here. So, for example, these are, these are four cell laptop batteries. So they've got two cells in series, these are 3.7 volt cells each, which equals 4 point, um, 4.7 volt for the pair of them in series. And then, generally these cells in laptops are about 2,000, 2,200 milliamp hours each. So this, these batteries, well these ones are 5,200, so this is probably 2,600 milliamp hour cells. So then you've got, in parallel, two banks of two batteries in series, if that makes sense. So rather than hacking these batteries up, if I just connect something to this connector, and hook it up to, or fold it properly up to one of those cheap phone chargers, in fact I may... I did actually buy a couple at some stage to use for stuff like this. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. Um, excuse the fact that I'm not really filming my thing. There's all manner of personal documents in this filing cabinet. Um, but here we go. This, these things. They're like five bucks from my supermarket. Um, but yeah, so it says 12 slash 24. So these things run off just about anything. So I'll take this apart, take the guts out of it, solder it up to a thing to connect to those batteries and then I've got myself quite a cheap simple little 
thing to charge my phone off an EPC battery without needing to chop up the batteries. So I realised as well that um, doing this I could over discharge the battery and damage it but I'm guessing that once the battery voltage gets too low that thing's probably going to cut off anyway and if this actually works reliably I'm just going to buy um, one of these things it's kind of hard to type with one hand um, I'll just buy something like one of these and hook it up with a little push button switch so that when I want I can just push a button can just push a button and it will tell me the voltage of the battery and obviously I I know what voltage is to stop using lithium ion battery when it gets down to so anyway um, I thought this was worth a little video um, if it actually works well it'll it should go quite well this is probably not the most efficient way to harness every ounce of power out of one of those batteries but I don't really care it'll charge should charge my iPhone a couple of times I mean um, if each one of these cells is 2.2 um, no 2200 milliamp hours well say for example an iPhone battery is about 1500 so that means each one of these cells should be able to fully charge an iPhone at least once there's four of them so in theory I should get at least four charges maybe five but I'm saying I'll probably get f at least four four and a little bit because somewhere between four and five or maybe between five and six somewhere around there is when the battery voltage is probably going to get too low and that charge is going to cut out or it's going to start dropping down the USB out voltage on this to the point the phone doesn't want to charge but I'll get a, I should get a few charges out of each battery and I got so many I got nothing else to do with them so all I'm potentially losing is the five dollars for this charger so anyway, um, I harnessed this connector off the motherboard of, or wherever it went off, the completely smashed one. And as you can see, it's got a couple of, um, I ended up, I was going to desolder it, but I decided just to chop the circuit board because it's lead free solder and it's really hard to desolder without a professional tool to do it. And especially with how small those pins are. So I'm going to be, I'm going to have to try and solder to them but that's why I've got the battery pin out here so I'll have to solder to I've, I'm going to try and keep the soldering as far apart as possible so I'll solder to that pin I'll solder to that pin and I'll solder to that pin and then on this pin I'm going to have to rig up a switch to short that pin to ground to actually turn the battery IC on in the EPC okay so I've got um, that soldered there I'm telling you, soldering wise to the tiny pins on there, of which that's lead free solder and I'm soldering with lead solder, is way more difficult than it first seemed. I'm probably going to ditch that connector and use something else if this works. I also discovered that um, I actually don't need the purple wire. The purple wire was for the battery on thing, but if you look, I'm actually, my charger, it's, here you know, if I can, some of the lights off in here, you. I'm pretty sure you can tell that light is on and as you can see there's no other wires so the only way it's getting power is from this um, but yeah that seems to do nothing so I can completely ditch that that may actually be um, what I think that is is that's the reset for the inbuilt battery protection circuit because this will have a battery protection I see in fact if we look at this picture um, yeah, that is battery protection I see there, um, obviously the wires to the cells, and then here, I can, actually that looks like part of the charging regulator, but yeah, the point is that there is a battery protection I see in there, so that just resets that if you discharge the pack too much, but I'm not going to need that at all because, um, if I do discharge one too much and that protection IC trips out, as soon as I plug it into my crappy old EPC to charge it back up, it'll reset the IC. So, let's for the first time now, live on camera, got my iPhone here. Um, I need an iPhone cable. So, I'm going to plug iPhone cable into the car charger. Okay. 
So my phone cables into the car charger to prove that is definitely connected to that. There's this, and now if I don't drop it all over the floor, um, I've got to be careful because those things are only sitting on there. Let's plug this into here. And 54% charged. So, just to make this completely legit, okay, you can see um, that that's charging. That's wired up to there, getting power from that, from this battery. And just to reference, the iPhone lights up when it disconnects from charging, so if I pull this out of here, you can see that disconnect, so I plug it back in. So there we go. So I'm going to work on building this into a box, I'll have another video on that. But my proof of concept that I can charge an iPhone from an EPC battery like this is definitely a go. Um, it's probably not the best for battery, it's probably not the best for that thing. Um, I've took a multimeter up and just double checked that the 5 volt out of here is definitely 5 volt. But I've used these things plenty of times before and they're fine. Um, if we look at 55% now. Um, if I zoom in. Yeah. Sorry for the horrible sound this camera makes when I zoom. Um, so, it, come on. God, this camera pisses me off. It's the wires in front of it. They're phony what I think. So, we're at 55... Here, I'll just pick it up. Yep, we're at 55% now. And it's not going to focus. It's close. Stupid non-macroing camera. There we go. So, um... Yep, that'll all get put into a nice box of some description once I've just double checked all the voltages and I'll ditch that. I may just rig that up. I was originally going to rig it up with one of these, like a little toggle switch. But, um, I may just rig it up with a push button switch so that in the event I do need to reset the battery IC, I've got that capability. I'm probably going to have to do something better with this connector because I'm pretty sure those solder joints are going to stay on for all of no time at all. I kind of want to keep using the connector though because um, I saw I saw this person's. It's funny because this one actually I had no idea someone else had already done this, but I guess it's hardly surprising given the internet. This guy's gone and built all um, battery protection circuitry with an Arduino and stuff. I I haven't got time for that, but um, this guy's just stuck spade terminals straight into the battery, and I thought of doing that. But given that I'm planning to use more than one battery for this, I think, actually now I think about it, that's probably some sort of charging circuit, looking at that. Because that looks like more than just a lin... Oh, uh, although it does look like just a linear regulator. Oh, look, I don't know. Um, but yeah, he might have rigged up a way to charge it, where you see, I want to be able to swap the batteries in and out. And so having a connector where all the pins will always get put into the right spots is probably be quite beneficial. Um, let's just have a look at this. Oh yeah, look at this. In the time that I've done this, um, if my camera ever wants to focus, there we go, you can see I'm at 57%. So it definitely is charging my iPhone from an EPC battery. So yep, so I'm working on setting a proper workshop up and I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff with related lithium-ion batteries and building cheap hacks like this. I mean, I, I do have, like, commercial, like, portable chargers. Like, I've got, um, this piece of junk, for example, which, this thing's horrible, and I actually had to hack a hard switch into it because it's got this crappy little fluorescent display on it. Um, I'll just have to shove something into there to switch the switch on, so just give me a second. It's got this horrid little fluoro display on it, which, um, like, flashes up and down when it's charging and stuff. But the electronics in this thing are a piece of junk. And it has a very bad habit of leaving, just locking that display on randomly when it's in my bag. Because it's supposed to only come on when you press a button, or when it's charging, or when you're charging something from it. But the problem with it is, is it randomly locks the display on, and ends up just flattening the battery. So I hacked a little hard switch into it which just physically disconnects the battery from the circuit board. Um, I've had a bit of fun with the battery protection I see in that one as well. Um, I've got a good mind to remove it, but I know the dangers of doing that. 
So yeah, I'm going to do a whole bunch of stuff like that. Um, I'm working on re making a... Okay, my apologies, my digital camera decided to go flat. So, as I was saying, I'm working on an adapter, just a little clip, to clip one of these L-series batteries on, which I've got like 10 of, and being able to power USB supplied stuff. Um, I also, rather than using these things, a site called Hobby King, if I just wait for my slow as shit internet to work, um, Hobby King actually sell quite, quite a cool little contraption. Um, it's designed for hooking up to a LiPo battery, but it is a USB charging adapter designed to hook up to a LiPo battery. And the thing I really like about this is the fact that it says um, DC five uh, DC seven to thirty volt input. So what that means is stuff like running it off this seven point four volt battery or seven point two volt battery or something. Um, of course, these batteries, right? The rated voltage is actually quite close to when they're flat. For example, a seven point 2 volt battery or 7.4 volt battery. Oh, and look at this. We can see it here. This thing, you, you can see the display sort of like flicked on and off. Now, I'm not touching that. If I tap it sometimes, or if I pick it up, or press the button or something, it'll sometimes go off. But yeah, so in the course of filming this, that thing's gone screwed up again. And this just, oh, I was going to say, my battery go flat already, but no. Oh, look, it's back on. Good piece of junk. <laughs> um, so yeah so anyway as I was saying that thing can properly take power from this probably better than that can and um, what was I saying oh I was talking about battery voltages yeah um, a battery pack like this even though it's rated at 7.2 volt um, those these lithium ion cells the ones like these ones the um, 18650 cells a lot of the time, when they're flat, they're around, say, 3.4 volt, 3.5, 3.4. Um, when they're completely charged, they're about 8.4, 8.6, something around that area. So what that means is that with something like um, a pack like this, that'll probably go down to about... Um, 6.8 to 7 or something when it's flat and that'll be perfect because at that point this little thing won't have enough voltage to run anymore and so it will cut off before you over discharge your pack so anyway i hope you've enjoyed this first little video i've got plenty more videos to come on this sort of stuff that thing's back on um it's my battery at now i'm at 63 percent so it's definitely charging and it's not it's not just trickling a tiny amount of power into it either it's actually ch chucking a fair bit of juice and this thing's hardly getting warm at all so anyway hope you enjoyed this little video and if you're interested in more lithium ion battery stuff and tech stuff and i'll just knock the connect off but whatever and all that sort of thing please subscribe i'll have plenty more of that sort of thing and thanks for watching